Spanish, you know, the link to my credential. Thank you. Um, so we're cooking a mental soup today. And um, what do you guys know about mentors? Okay, thank <laughs> you. Protein, yes. Um, so I have a mixture of mentors, just not one, not just one. So I have um, black beans, kidney beans, um, I have pinto beans, um, split peas, um, and red lentils, and also uh, moon lentils. It's, it's M U N Z, it's a very high protein. So the reason I chose, I mean, we, we serve this at the restaurant, and the reason I chose all this kind of mixture of lentils is uh, give that variety and uh, just your flavor, and um, we just eat this way back home, back in the hall. And um, our goal is to bring what we eat back home to the Treasure Valley, as you know. So, yes, um, and not just the lentils, our lentil soup is curry flavored. So, do you guys like curry? Yeah. Uh, so what do you know about the curry? Like, you know, whenever I ask people, they have this food system and they're wanting that curry is like, what's the type, greasy or spicy? And, you know, they, then I imagine that tikka masala out of the you know, can from a grocery store. And for us, in the fall or at very much from never use any of that stuff. Curry is a combination of um, different spices which is like cumin and coriander, garlic, ginger, nami, cinnamon, all kinds of good stuff. So that's what we use, powder, curry, and at the restaurant, um, we don't use any canned thing, like nothing is bought outside, we prepare everything from the scratch, all the spices are in the bowls, and we just put up in a bit, a bit of that, a bit of that, and then uh, cook that way. Yeah, so um, on the back of that sheet, um, there's a lot more information about what curry is good for you, like uh, ginger and garlic, and especially turmeric, uh, why it's good for you, and you know, uh, basically, uh, adopting a curry is like the best way to go. Yeah, we all want to be longer, be healthier, and feel good, and um, curry just gives you that, you know. Um, high energy, it's good for your bones, good for your blood flow, good for your heart. So that's why in the Himalayas, um, it's, um, it's believed that Yetis are the high, um, you know, like they live forever, like 150 years or something. Yeah. So that's that. Uh, yeah, because they eat curry in the Himalayas. So uh, the lentils I'm going to cook here is vegan and gluten free and vegetarian of course. And especially if you are vegetarian or something, um, vegetarian, you can eat two times more lentils to make up for that, for that meat. You know, people people who love meat or they eat meat, um, they they get their protein and their vitamins and all that. But if you are vegetarian, lentils are the best source of protein. And you're going to eat like two times. And that's, that's the reason I chose lentils today. You know, so that people, you know, it's winter, you know, it's cold, it's whiskey. So that's the reason I'm going to eat lentils today. And um, so uh, the ingredients are um, different kinds of beans, like kidney beans, brazo beans, black eyed peas, um, like, the way, like, like the ones I used to do. And uh, we have onions and potatoes and carrots and celery and uh, some tomatoes too. Uh, and I like to put uh, fresh garlic and ginger in my cooking. So it's good for you. Um, I have some throat, but normally ginger is like so good for sore throat and uh, for your bones and uh, so many other things. Um, yeah, and then nutmeg, um, that's another main ingredient. Um, and I like to put my eggs, um, especially it makes you water and then it's really good for you. And cooking powder, of course. And joy. So we're going to do the chopping and stuff later, but first of all, I'm going to serve um, uh, lentils over rice. Um, it's called a 
our heart and our chats, the, like, uh, it's, we eat the same thing every day back in the fall, like dawa and a uh, different kind of curry, and that's the morning thing and that's the evening thing. Um, there will be some meat, of course, which is like more vegetables, and um, there will be dal and bhakti is like rice, and another kind of like potatoes or sashimi or anything, cauliflower. So we're going to serve you that right now, and then um, I'll be chopping and cooking after the food. Thank you. So all those legumes together would be called lentils. Yes. But in reality, they are but there's red lentils and um, like this moon thing. I'll yes. show you what I have here. Right now. Like all these kind of things. So um, this is uh, kind of beans, but uh, also red lentils. So what else? Uh, more like this one. Oh, okay. So, so that would be what I would normally call lentils, but you group of all the students yes. under the title. Yes. Or Sure. Yeah, and it's it's pretty tra traditional way the way we do. So Nepal is depending on what part of Nepal you go, but they have different ways of cooking lentils, just like in here too. You go to the south, everybody loves black eyed peas. Right? <laughs> Up north, very few people. Like. So, um, uh, depending on what kind of people you talk to and where they are from in Nepal, the definition of lentils might be different. But I think this is the most common way that people try to make it more uh, uh, tastier and you know, something new. Uh, this was imported from Nepal, by the way. <laughs> Uh, Sunita was, Sunita is our, uh, I don't know, probably some of you guys know Raj. Uh, yeah, she was in Nepal last summer, so she brought this picture from Nepal. Um, I really liked it, you know, because uh, I remember my mom, grown, uh, like when I was growing up, she used to cook meals uh, the same exact way. Because, uh, my dad was really struggling with his finances, so he couldn't afford like uh, gas, you know, rent and things like that. And Nepal was so developing, so 20 years ago or so. And I don't know, have you guys ever had like seen face to face people cook in this way? This is like a wood, you know, uh, fire. Uh, this is done for more different purpose here, but back home this is. Unnecessary. This is the only way you can do it, right? So, uh, so the, what this lady has in her hand is a little uh, bamboo pipe. Kind of thing. Yeah, it can be a bamboo or even a metal pipe. She blows air through it just to get the fire. Fire. Is it charcoal? Yeah. Um, we use wood. Mm -hmm. um, like lots of little things. Yeah. So basically, people would go to the forest and you know, just like what we do when we camp out in here, and then bring home and. Then Trust me, this is the best way to cook because it tastes so good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, what I think what she's putting here is this one right here, I can tell it's a chai, it's a chai tea pot because it has that little uh, strand on the top. So, and it sounds like she's got the going on. So, it's a really nice picture, I love it. It's thought I wanted to share it with you guys. It reminds you of home. Oh, yes. Absolutely. Um, yeah. My mother my used to cook like that too. Yeah. And for like two, three years, my mom cooked that way, and then my dad bought a gas ring, and then I didn't, I didn't cook that way, but I used to cook back home. Yeah. So we're uh, still waiting. I'm meeting another uh, chef. He's going to um, teach you some uh, knives, knife works, how to chop and stuff. He must be on his way. And then Everything is pretty ready, and um, we're going to chop some onions and potatoes and this and that. He's going to show you how to do it and start cooking. Well, I think you should also mention that uh, the amount of time, like, uh, I mean, I know it's on the yeah. recipe, but you want to talk about it. Yeah, so for lentils, it's better if you soak it overnight, like all the beans and lentils. Yeah, soak it overnight so that it's like, um, soaked very well or at least three hours and um, it takes about, it about um, uh, an hour 
then another thing you can do, if you want to make your own garlic paste, because it will spread out better, whether it be for garlic butter or anything else. Nice and small. Can you see this pretty well or not? No. But what you do is you get close to the edge of the cutting board, lay your knife at an angle, and press down and flatten it out. And I, I need to put a foot towel underneath my cutting board. But you just go back and forth, keep applying pressure. And eventually, I don't want to make this too much of a case because this is the cutting board. You just keep doing that back and forth, applying pressure, and it will taste that and turn into a paste and then absorb from the paste.
and uh, not big. Um, I, I bought it from here too, so um, not even a half spoon because it gives a very um, strong flavor. So you want that balance kind of thing. Because in this soup, like nothing is overpowering, everything is kind of balanced and blended together. So that's the way I cook at the restaurant, and that's how I like it.
and we'll cover it and keep stirring every 10 minutes. And to take an hour and we'll have to have it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. 